Hi and welcome to the Inquendo Guitars workshop and another part in the video series where I'm building my very first single cut guitar model and in this episode I'm going to continue work on the guitar body so let's get started. First off I'm going to drill all the holes required for the bridge so the three mounting uh, holes for the mounting screws and of course the six holes for the strings and the string ferrules on the other side of the body. In a previous episode I already drawn in the layout and where my intonation line is going to be and where the front of the bridge has to be and I already went ahead and punched three holes but I'm going to explain you what I did. I want my bridge as centered as possible but more important I want it to be in line with my neck so I reattached the neck. I'm going to sit this at the mark for the front of the bridge. And now I can use a ruler alongside the fretboard. And I'm going to mark the sides of the neck to see if my bridge can be nice and centered. You could of course also use uh, two uh, pieces of string or actual strings to align your bridge. I like to do it like this. And now I can check if my bridge is actually aligned with the sides of my neck. I can mark the three holes using all and first off I'm going to drill the mounting holes. Use two screws to fix the bridge in place. And then I'm going to mark and drill the six holes for the strings. So I've got my bridge in place, it's nice and secure. And now I'm going to take a four millimeter drill bit that has a bit of a pointy end on the back side. And this drill bit fits perfectly in the string holes. And now I'm, I'm using the pointy end just to make a little dent so I know exactly where the center is. Unfortunately this drill bit doesn't fit the other way around so I, I can't drill through the bridge without damaging the nickel plating so that's something I'm not going to do. But this will help me find the center of that hole and I'm going to drill the outermost two holes uh, almost all the way through the body that just the tip of this bradle point drill bit shows up on the other side of the guitar body and the middle four holes I'm going to drill only halfway through. Then I'm going to take off the bridge, flip the guitar around and use the two marks left by the bradle point uh, to align the two outer holes of the bridge. Then I'm going to mark the inner four and drill all these holes. And then I'm going to use an eight millimeter um, drill bit to drill the recess for the little string ferrule or string stopper, whatever you like to call it. And maybe I even do a little recess so it's nice and flush with the back of the guitar, but that depends on how accurate I can drill these holes. So yeah, here we go. shows up on camera but here are two little marks left by the bradle point of the drill bit and now I can use my bridge to see if they went through the body nice and square and they're aligned with these two holes and they're perfectly centered so now I'm going to use again the same drill bit and drill these two holes all the way through so I have I can use two little drill bits to fix the bridge in place temporarily. So the two holes are drilled all the way through and now I can use the bridge itself and two drill bits to temporarily keep my bridge 
in place and I have another drill bit to mark the holes. After marking the holes, I can remove the bridge and use an awl to mark them even better, but as accurately as I can. And now I have to decide uh, whether or not to recess the string ferrules because the string spacing or the spacing between these holes is only 10.02 millimeters and the flange on the string ferrule is 10 millimeters. So that means when drilling these holes I need to be very accurate uh, because otherwise they might not fit because the flanges of these string ferrules are almost touching and I did a little test already to see what the best method would be to make them recessed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 4mm drill bit and drill the, the other four holes and then I'm going to use my stepper drill to enlarge them to 8mm then do a first little check with the actual string ferrules, if the spacing is still correct, if I've drilled accurate enough, and if so, I can use the next step on my stepper drill to create the little recess for the 10 millimeter flange on the string ferrules, if that makes any sense. But I think when you see me do it, it will. So here we go. Unfortunately, not everything went according to plan. Five out of six are positioned perfectly, but here's one that went wrong for some reason. It's now touching the string ferrule next to it. So that needs to be fixed. Quite easy. I'm going to drill this eight millimeter hole just a little deeper. I'm going to glue in an eight millimeter dowel reposition the hole and drill the four millimeter hole and do the same thing with the stepper drill and then it should be nicely centered between the other two and then i think i can take a gamble and do the recess as well so i've repaired my mistake and as you can see you can't see the dowel anywhere on the outside of the guitar and guitar building you will make mistakes in guitar building uh, we try as much as we can to prevent them but if they happen it's all about it's all about how to fix them uh, that makes the difference my mistake has been fixed and i went ahead and drilled the little recess for the flange on the string ferrules and now they should fit in nicely next to each other and I put them in upside down just to check the fit. And they're nicely aligned and they fit rather well. So I'm happy with this for now. And yeah, if needed, I can always use an eight millimeter drill bit uh, to deepen the eight millimeter part just a little if necessary, but I don't think it is. So that's fine for now. Now it's time to drill all the holes to the uh, control cavities. So the first hole I'm going to drill is from the bridge pickup cavity to the main control cavity and I always use a bit of protection and in this case a plastic card to protect the corner of the pickup cavity from the drill so I don't accidentally make a dent in this corner from the drill bit. So I'm going to drill it like this diagonal into the control cavity hopefully.
And yeah, here we have it nice and centered. So the first hole is drilled. So the next hole is the same principle, only going from this corner to the control cavity for the three-way switch. That's somewhere around here. And I know this angle should be correct from this corner to this corner and then into the cavity. And hopefully the downwards angle is also correct so I don't end up drilling through the back of my guitar body. So, fingers crossed. And I'm going to use a slightly smaller drill bit for this one. And you can see how much the drill bit ate away from the plastic cart. So if this cart wasn't here, that would be your body boot. Fingers crossed. Yeah, and here's our little hole. Quick little break from this video for a little announcement. In order for me to run this YouTube channel without too many ads during the video, I've set up uh, a merchandise store so you guys can support me directly if you would like. So check out the link in the video description down below to my Teespring and Quendo Guitars goodie store to find all kinds of mugs and t-shirts for you to yeah, buy and support me directly. And in order to thank you for your support thus far, I'm going to give out a promotion code you can use on checkout to get a 15% discount on all your purchases in my Unquendo Guitars goodie store. So use the promo code THANK YOU as a single word, THANK YOU all together uh, yeah, on checkout to get your 15% discount and support me and my channel directly. So. Let's get back to the video. So with that hole drilled, it's now time to drill the holes for the controls. Um, so I can keep an eye on the thickness while carving. And I've marked the holes, the positions for the holes on my template. So I can fit my template over the body. The hole for the three-way switch, I think I'm going to drill it from the other side so I know my three-way switch is dead center with the cavity underneath but i could of course make a mark there just in case the other four controls so the two volume controls and the two tone controls um, take a bit more care i'm going to mark the intended position and i'm going to take a pot and I'm going to check if they don't run into the uh, edge of the control cavity. Now this guitar is going to be outfitted with Fishman pickups and they use a smaller size pot, but it's always good practice to uh, take the larger pots in this case into account. So maybe at a later stage, a client can switch the pots out himself or and isn't uh, restricted to the size of pots I've chosen. So always take a standard component uh, for your measurements. Yeah, it all should fit nicely so I can drill the holes for these uh, pots and of course the pot for the three-way switch. So there's a 12 millimeter hole and I know for the Fishman pickups uh, the, pot the pots need an 8 millimeter hole for those. So that's what I'm going to do next and then I can finally start shaping this body. The holes are drilled into this guitar body and now it's time to do the fun stuff. It's time to start carving both the front and the back of this guitar. Uh, it's a real fun and creative process and basically anything goes. The only thing I have to keep in mind is that I leave a nice and flat surface area where the pickup rings are going to be and where the bridge is going to sit. But other than that I'm free to do whatever I like and of course I have to keep in mind the final thickness of the guitar top above the control cavity that, that I don't make it too thin but yeah other than that I can do whatever I like and that's what I'm going to do I'm going to put on some music get out my files and rasps and start carving this body <laughs>
done carving this body and I already uh, rough sanded it with 120 and 240 grit sandpaper so it looks nice and smooth. Uh, yeah, I did a nice little round over uh, at the top of the guitar and at the back of course there's a belly carve and I already started uh, the carve for the neck joint and I can really finish this once the neck is glued in and I can really blend this in with the heel of the neck so to get a nice transition between the neck and the guitar body. Yeah, and while I was carving, I realized that my control knobs might end up looking as, as if they're at an angle because of the rounded guitar body. And I don't really like that, so I decided to go for some PRS style recesses underneath uh, the control knobs and of course the three-way switch. But because I've already drilled in all the holes, it's very hard to keep your force in a bit dead center with the existing hole. So I came up with a little solution and that's I made a little dowel, a 10 millimeter dowel and I marked the center of this dowel with my awl and now I can use this dowel to pluck the holes and this gives me a nice center mark uh, for my pillar drill and of course my Forstner bit and have a nice center uh, to drill the little recess as deep as I need it to to be uh, as deep as I need it uh, for the control knob to be flush with the body so it looks nice and straight onto this body so yeah I'm going to set up my pillar drill and yeah drill these five little recesses for the control knobs I'm terribly sorry guys I just drilled these four recesses and I realized the camera didn't record. Uh, I think there must be too much dust in the camera at the moment because I noticed the record button isn't f working properly. I really have to press it in hard for it to start recording. So I'm terribly sorry, but luckily I've got the three-way switch still to do. So I'm going to set that up, set up the camera again, and now make sure my camera is recording before I start drilling. So let's get to it. And the last hole to drill in this episode is the hole for the output jack of the guitar. And it's going to be a 12 millimeter hole and I've already marked out the center of the guitar and draw in a line uh, for the um, direction and I made sure it's straight down so I can hold my little drill and drill straight down. And then I'm going to use again a stepper drill uh, to make a little recess so the input jack or the output jack will be nice and flush with the guitar body. Let's go. So after drilling all these holes and shaping the body, uh, making the recesses and of course make the hole for the output jack, it's time to call it an episode unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I hope you liked this video and if you did, please leave a like and leave a comment in the comment section down below. I really appreciate it. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell to get notified when I upload something new. In the next episode, I'm going to start with making the cover plates for the control cavities so I can start sanding this guitar body. And I should also be able to glue in the neck, so by the end of next episode I should end up some, with something resembling a guitar. So keep an eye out for that one, I hope to see you all there, but until then, have a nice week.